It's a disgusting American food. Most American food can put a smile on anyone's face, usually. From hamburgers, fried chicken, and apple pie, American food has reached far and wide around the globe. But what of those items that are so repelling, we want them to be banned, no matter how great most American food is? We've found some more for you to feast your unbelieving eyes on. The 10 American Foods That Should Be Banned, Part 2. Olive Loaf. What is in that? Olive loaf and ham spread, no mayo. Now, we're not talking about the bread here. Olive loaf bread is probably one of the most sought-after breads available at your local bakery, and for very good reason. The baking of fresh bread with a few choice olives thrown into the dough can only take your taste buds to higher levels of enjoyment. You simply have not lived until you've tried olive-studded focaccia bread. It is absolutely divine no matter how else you dress it. But putting olives in luncheon meat is a tad different, wouldn't you say? We sure would, and the sight of it alone is enough to send most people running in the other direction. Run away! Run away! Run away! It doesn't look all that appealing, really, and at the same time, it isn't just the olives present in the luncheon meat at all. The meat itself looks rather questionable, too, with pockets of fat and other undecipherable items staring up at you as you put this atrocious offering to your lips and have at it. If you're courageous enough or have enjoyed this in the past, hey, all the more power to you. All in all, it sounds pretty gross to us, so why not go for a few slices of capicola? a dried cured pork cold cut common in Italian cuisine on a freshly baked olive studded focaccia. Now you're talking. Jello salad. I'm not comfortable with all these people here eyeing my jello salad. Hey, we appreciate jello as much as the next person. Cherry and lime, you name it. We'll be there to lap up all the gooey, jiggly, fruity goodness. To the last morsel, even. But for the love of all that is decent and good in this world, can America please stop producing jello salad? It's quite terrible to taste and just to behold. We don't want to see it anymore. But the more we wish it gone, there it appears again at that party we didn't feel like going to anyways. It's right next to the hickory-smoked ham and ambrosia salad. Can someone tell these people that it isn't 1965 anymore? Oh, give it the times, man. We feel the need to rid the world of such disastrous culinary ideas, if they can be called that at all. And recipes for this stuff differ from simply weird to the absolutely absurd. We can more than understand some preserved fruit added to the mix. We won't argue that addition, as at least it's still sweet. But some add radishes, olives, and whatever veggies they can find at the back of the fridge. And to that we say, really? Couldn't you have just whipped up some pudding? Even the instant sort from a box would have been better than this green jello salad with carrot shards and pickled radishes. Deep fried butter. Ladies and gentlemen, this is why the rest of the world hates us. That's it. <laughs> You heard right, we're talking about fried butter. Now, we know how weird that sounds, as it's usually butter that we do most of our frying in, but the people that brought us some of the richest dishes known to the world have thought of yet another heart-stopping dish that can clog arteries and get you stuffed and complacent in the blink of an eye. We wonder only if the butter is fried, well, in butter. Good question, good question. The recipe for this is actually simpler than you'd think, though. Essentially, Think mozzarella sticks, only way higher in fat content. Way higher. A cold piece of butter is battered and then deep fried, and depending on the kitchen or chef, the battered piece of butter can be fried in oil, fat, or yes, even butter. Now try working these puppies off in the gym, particularly after having downed quite a few of these bite-sized golden nuggets of fatty goodness. But the flavor of them is and can be way too rich for probably even the biggest fan of fatty foods. Now add garlic butter to the mix and you may have a few more fans. Now you're talking! But as they stand, they are way too unhealthy. And we know that sometimes it's good to be bad when it comes to food, but perhaps this may be taking it a tad too far. The item is very popular at state fairs, specifically in Iowa. Chitterlings. That's pig intestines for y'all that don't know. 
from a safe distance, this particular dish can probably be confused with chicken noodle soup. Remember, we said from a safe distance, meaning from afar, because once you step close enough to this stuff, if the sight of it won't turn you away, then the smell will. It's quite pungent. It sure doesn't smell like chicken soup. And furthermore, those things that looked like noodles and pieces of pulled chicken breast aren't what you thought they were. They're actually pig's intestines, and as rubbery as ever, no matter how long you boil them for. Awful has been gaining steam in American cuisine, which is a branch of said cuisine that specializes in using the innards of most animals, from the brain to even the heart and intestines. It may not sound very appetizing, but intestines and stomach lining have been a popular choice of ingredients for generations in cuisines around the world. Chitterlings, which is one of the few American dishes to use offal, has its roots in the southern soul food traditions, and can even be battered and deep fried after stewing. Unfortunately, most recipes for this dish don't require you to sear the meat first, which can make it all the more rubbery and all the more off-putting. American Cheese Slices have you been up all night eating cheese? As tasty as it is, it really isn't cheese, now is it? It was first produced in the early portion of the 20th century, although variations were around quite a bit before, and has been with us ever since, being the main cheese used on cheeseburgers and, of course, the ever-popular grilled cheese sandwich. Now, you may be asking, how bad could this cheese be? Well, these cheese slices are the furthest thing from being natural and actually good for you. The actual process of fabrication, which leads to the term processed cheese, breaks down the cheese far too much for it to still bear the name of cheese on its own, which is why it is actually a regulated standard of identity that they call this cheese processed American cheese. I 100% processed American cheese food lariat. It is an actual federal code of regulations established for quite some time now. Although it is cheese overall, a medley of cheeses at that, they still want to distinguish that it's different from your run-of-the-mill old cheddar. And there are obvious reasons for this. Also, it is often mistaken as being cheddar cheese. This is positively false. And although American cheese does contain some real cheeses like Colby cheese, some cheddar, and even curd cheese, among others, the overall recipe calls for many other ingredients that further extend this product to the realms of fake products made to taste like the real thing. Now, next time you have your heart set on an ooey, gooey, grilled cheese sandwich, try using three types of real cheddar instead. Trust us, the end result will be a million times better. Chicken Fried Steak Is it chicken or is it steak? It's all in the name, really. For the most part, this recipe is quite simple, and if you know how fried chicken is prepared, then this preparation is a no-brainer. You take your fresh cut of steak. Any cut will do for this, but usually a nice ribeye is best, boneless if at all possible. Then you batter it, deep fry it, and perhaps finish it in the oven. This bad boy is topped with a white gravy, which is essentially a base of bechamel with added mushrooms, sautéed with onions, and... Voila. Now, as interesting as it sounds, it is preposterously bad for you. Loaded in saturated fat, and after you down one of these babies, try moving an inch off that couch or comfortable chair. Reaching for the remote will be an utter impossibility, so you'll be stuck watching the Home Shopping Network for hours to come. Sorry, friends. Fry sauce. Ketchup and mayonnaise <laughs> mixed together. So. Mm. We're sure we can all remember that scene from Step Brothers where Will Ferrell's character doesn't want to share what he called My Fancy Sauce with the John C. Riley character, who was now his stepbrother. For years, people have been mixing ketchup and mayo for their fries or nuggets, and that's part of the whole fun, isn't it? There are many people that are on opposite sides of what the best accompaniment for a french fry is. There are those that think nothing beats the tangy taste of ketchup when it comes to a salty golden and fry fresh from the fryer, but there are those, especially in Europe and parts of Canada, that believe that nothing should touch a fry apart from mayonnaise. I've seen them do it, man. Well, for those that spend their lives on the middle ground, a combination of the two is where it's at. 
And we feel that a product that already does the work for you takes all the fun away. Let us combine mayo, ketchup, and whatever other condiment we so choose to combine on our own. As it turns out, this combo has been around for quite some time. Contrary to what Farrell's character believed in that hilarious film, he didn't invent it. Sweet potatoes and marshmallows. Sweet potatoes are nothing without marshmallows! Bye-bye. An American classic indeed. But as we see it passed from person to person at the Thanksgiving table, those of us that are quite fed up with this item wonder when it will go the way of other tiresome recipes from days gone by. Haven't we had enough of this one? Is it time to say goodbye? Bye-bye. The tragedy here isn't necessarily the marshmallows, but really the fact that they aren't needed at all, as sweet potatoes themselves are already quite sweet, hence the name. And and they don't need a partner in crime to get the eater to that level of enjoyment. There are so many recipes out there that can accentuate the sweet potato's natural sweetness, and we don't have to resort to cheap parlor tricks like adding a form of confection to the mix. The infamous donut burger. All sandwiched between two donuts. And like so many other items on this list, perhaps the donut burger showcases what's wrong with all of them in the simplest and best of ways. And it leads us to ask the inevitable question, isn't it just a little too much? And maybe this question can be asked for so many of the American cuisine items we've seen and the ones we haven't yet shown you. A standard policy in the beautiful and powerful culture of American cuisine and the way in which they live is the old adage, go big or go home. And we most certainly agree with it for the most part, but perhaps sometimes these ideas can be a tad overzealous in scope. This particular recipe here is an example of that. Bacon, a fried donut, and the hamburger itself. We'd hope that some of the chefs that come up with these crazy concoctions think about the health risks of inventing something so huge. It just so happens to be way too big for even the biggest of foodies. Peanut Butter Pizza I'm still saving the last slice of peanut butter and pineapple pizza. This one here is definitely over the top, so to speak, as we can see the melted peanut butter acting as the sauce here and the cooked pepperoni and peppers resting there among the peanut ooze. Very few words come to mind. Maybe the only appropriate one, and one that delivers our sentiments exactly, is quite simply... Ew! So, to the creators of this dish, wherever you may be, we say, please stop producing this vile concoction immediately. Immediately. This is definitely an American food that should be banned. You'll find more great videos right here. Just tap on that screen. And if you haven't joined our notification squad yet, show us some love and slam that subscribe button and click that bell.